Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Comics Evolve, where we discuss all things around comics media culture with your hosts, Andy, Jarian, and Alex. Welcome to Comics Evolve, myself, Jarian Gibson. And I'm Alex Stroud. And we are back today, but it looks like we're still not able to stream to the Facebook page, um, but also looks like another week of Twitter slash X issues as well. So I am just double checking. Looks like Kick and Trovo and Twitch were live. Let me double check YouTube to make sure. Dude, there are technical issues with everything lately. I was having technical issues when, when I was trying to get on my laptop earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let me just double check um, the YouTube page so I can share the link out. But while I'm doing that, how are you doing today, Alex? Good, good. Um, I've uh, been doing like a little bit of a uh, rewatch thing for the Deadpool movie coming out. Um, watch Deadpool last night. I'll probably watch the second one maybe today or tomorrow. And um, I'm going to watch uh, Logan again as well and uh finish up loki so um i got a good laugh i i forgot how funny the first deadpool movie is <laughs> then i watched it again it was so good dude it was so good so good i've been uh what did we just get oh i watched uh karate kid um or sorry cobra kai uh cobra kai. the first part of the last season my wife and i uh last night we binge watched that um so it, it was pretty good it's kind of you know a little predictable, but it sets up for a good, a good final season and some the same some things they threw out there that you'd expect coming as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a good final season. So it'll be good to see once part two comes out how things shore up. Nice. We just finish this post real quick and we can get going. Today we are going to talk about uh, the Deadpool and Wolverine preview. Um, Andy was going to join us today, but Andy has, of I think he's pretty much not seen any trailers and avoided most social media on the film, and he wanted to go into the film without any spoilers, so Blind. he decided to delay his comeback until the review episode, so August 4th, we will be back uh, for the review, um... And Andy will be back for that as well, which I respect his decision. If you haven't seen anything and you don't want to get spoiled, I can probably get it because it seems like every new trailer that comes out, we get some kind of a spoiler. So. You know, I, I miss that nostalgia of a time when there was all these leaks and everything and you wouldn't really know much going into the movies and, and stuff. And everything was just rumored and there was really no proof. I mean, what was that, like 10 years ago when more yeah. movies would come out and... You know, it was all just speculation and everything like that. But yeah, much different times now. It seems like we almost know the entire plot of the movie before it even comes out. So, yeah, and that that's the that's the terrible thing too. But if you think about it, for with how much stuff they have shown us in these trailers, um, mm -hmm. there are two things here. Um, one, they must be very confident with the film, which mm -hmm. I don't. You know, I I don't blame them for not being so. Mm -hmm. um, and then two. Um, think about what they haven't shown us yet, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it looks like with, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine, from all looks of it, they're piggybacking off of the post credit scene in Deadpool 2, mm -hmm. uh, where he got Cable's time travel device, went back and saved X4, saved uh, Robert. Was it Robert the guy? Oh, Peter. Peter, sorry, yeah, saved yeah. Peter. Sugar bear. Um, yeah, sugar bear. <laughs> um, you know, turn all things back. You know, made up for his mistakes with uh, Green Lantern. You know, did some other things across time. Um, but it looks like he went right those wrongs. And it's nice because at that time, uh, the Deadpool franchise was owned by Fox, right? So Marvel didn't mm -hmm. own any of that. Mar Marvel Studios didn't own any of that. And it's good with the whole multiverse thing going on with the events of Loki and everything that they're coming in and basically him doing that got him on the TVA's radar, it seems. And that, that's what I'm going to go with. What are your thoughts? 
Uh, you know, it's so funny. I was uh, I was watching Deadpool, uh, the first one, obviously, and I love that line that he says in that movie about like you know it's almost like the studio couldn't afford more X Men, and <laughs> and it's like you know going into this movie, it's so funny to me because it's like the trailers have shown us that there are a lot of mutants that are going to make an appearance in this movie, right? So. I think that for Deadpool, they kind of did that right. It sounds like kind of moving into the third movie, it seems like we're going to get a lot of things that people wanted. You know, obviously people wanted more more X-Men and, and more characters. I mean, we've known since like the first trailer that Pyro was going to be in this and that actor had no clue that they would even bring back, you know, his character for anything moving forward. Um, we know Feige worked with Hugh Jackman on the original X-Men movies, so him kind of coming back, I feel like this is like a full circle moment yep. for both Jackman and Feige because it's like, you know, all those like 20 some years ago, I, I don't know what the exact amount of time is, but, you know, Feige took Hugh Jackman out to dinner and then they talked about it. Hugh Jackman never thought he had the role. Originally, they wanted Russell Crowe, but Russell Crowe was like, nah, you know, like you should get Hugh Jackman to play Wolverine. And here we are again with Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine again. And, um, y you know, I'm very excited. I'm I'm really curious to see what we have in store for us with this um, final trailer, because it seems like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but um, it seems like they're going a little bit deeper than I thought that they would. And um, a lot of the characters, I just feel like we are going to see probably more X-Men probably. Yeah. If not, probably at least referenced um and we're probably going to see more more mutants just in general in the void and everything than we've seen in the trailers so far yeah i know we've seen toad also we, we've seen the whole fight between mm -hmm. him and saber tooth the saber tooth mm -hmm. from the original x-men movies not the not the uh wolverine um uh what first x what was that movie he had wolverine oh um uh, it wasn't the wolverine but it was the other wolverine yeah. movie where he went back and showed him all through history and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and the one with um, where Lee Shiver was playing Saber Tooth. That Saber Tooth is not in it unless we unless he makes a different appearance. But it looks mm -hmm. like he's fighting the Saber Tooth from the original X Men movie, the very first one. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the same actor. It looks like he's just older. Um, so we have that one. Um, yeah, I wonder too as well. Like, it, will we see uh, James Marsden and Halle Berry and, and Famke Jensen? Any of mm -hmm. those supporting cast characters, whether it's a flashback or whether. Um, it's something else because Famke was in the last Wolverine movie, the Wolverine, uh, mm -hmm. in all the dreams that he was having in the flashbacks and stuff. So yeah. I wonder who else is going to show up. You know, are we going to get any kind of history between Professor X and his, uh, his sister, um, Cassandra Nova? Mm -hmm. Um, because it, it, because if I remember correctly in the comics, didn't you try to kill him in the womb or something like that? Or mm -hmm. I can't yeah, remember. I think they had like a yeah. psionic battle or something like yeah. that. And then she like, she kind of disappeared but i think came back at some point in the future and um yeah i mean i'm i'm really curious to see what they do with her character because it seems like she's kind of the leader of all the mutants and you know the void at this point so and i would assume that whatever she's doing there she's probably like allowed them some sort of sanctuary mm -hmm. for you know like protection from Eliath because it seems like they've got like a little community there almost yep. in the void so um I, I would almost assume that maybe like the giant Ant-Man body that they're you know it's funny she's like a telepath and she's also inside of Ant-Man's giant head like it's just funny to me but um yeah I, I would assume that you know there's there's going to be something like that going on and I don't know if you want to go ahead and talk about it but the sling ring thing yeah, it looks like she had yeah that they had the both the reality stone and the time mm -hmm. stone in it, and it seems like that's how that one door opens up where we see in the trailer that Wolverine and Deadpool jump through. So yeah, I wonder if that's how she's controlling Eliath or mm -hmm. the whole thing about rings not or I'm sorry, Infinity Stones working in other universes or maybe in the void. That's interesting yeah. too as well. So yeah, and and I think it's really interesting there too because you got the time stone obviously and then you've got reality and then the sling rings themselves kind of allow you to go from any space in a universe, right? So it's kind of like one of those things where you got the ability to I guess time travel, go to any reality or any space with that sling sling ring. So it's kind of cool. Um, really interested to see what they do with that. I don't know if that's something that she's just kind of hiding because it almost makes me believe that if she has that, she can probably get out of the void at that point. Yeah. But, unless, unless if there's some kind of limitation there, I, I hope they explain that during the film. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I've got my tickets for Thursday afternoon mm-hmm. to go see it. My wife's like, you think X can go see us? I'm like, well, first of all, X, who's my, yeah, he's my, uh, 10 year old son has not seen any of the Deadpool movies, mm-hmm. except I think for the Christmas one. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, well, let me go see it first. Cause you see things because it's Marvel now that it won't be, it won't be as, Isn't it'll it be more, radar? yeah, it's radar too as well, but it won't, okay. it will be more toned down than the past Deadpool film. So she goes, how about this? You go see it first. Cause I know you're dying to see it. And she goes, we can go see it again that weekend. And then we can, you can tell me if it's good for our son to go see, which it probably won't be. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, back to the story, it, it almost seems like, so we know that from the trailers that Deadpool is trying to save his world. So it looks like his world um, is having ramifications of a uh, incursion or something. I, I think the basis is because his world has lost Wolverine, I think, uh-huh. that he has to find one to save his world. Uh-huh. Um, and it sounds like we're going to get them hopping through, at least Deadpool at first, hopping through a lot of universes to find the right Wolverine. Uh-huh. It also seems like in one of the trailers, too, they've shown where Wolverine kind of kneels down and falls in front of those graves that... He did something very bad in his universe, this Wolverine that he has recruits. And it's not the Wolverine from Logan. You know, even though they may revisit some things from Logan, it's not the Wolverine from Logan. It's an Wolverine from a universe we have not seen yet from reports. So it looks like we're going to get, you know, at least Dogpool, Lady Deadpool, uh, Kidpool. Um, I'm not sure what other variants we're going to see. Um, Ryan Reynolds did confirm that he is not playing Lady Deadpool. Um, it also sounds like that Blake Lively um, is not Lady Deadpool as well because Ryan Reynolds also said he wants to work with her on a project someday, but he can't afford her. Mm-hmm. So unless he's playing some misdirection there, it doesn't sound like she's playing Lady Deadpool either. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to get Wolverine variants, right? We, we've seen mm-hmm. uh, one of Patch. Um, it sounds like, too, that we also get possibly a comic accurate Wolverine in one of the universes. I haven't seen a lot of description. I've just seen some, some people who have seen, so just just so you know, a lot of the, the, the media have seen the first 30 minutes of the film. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of them said that we do get a comic accurate Wolverine, but they didn't say who was playing that variant. Um, there's rumors out there that Henry Cavill's a variant. There's rumors out there that Daniel Radcliffe's a variant. Um, you know, I won't be surprised that if we don't get any of that and that all the variants are somehow Hugh Jackman in different forms. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if what, you're going to go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think what bothers me about this movie is, you know, we obviously know we're going to get a bunch of Wolverine variants and it seems like Deadpool goes and finds like a Wolverine variant that is broken beyond almost repair in his mind. So it, it seems like he brings that variant back to the TVA and I don't know if that's like the the hinge point where it's like, all right, the TVA, because it seems like he's working with the TVA, and then all of a sudden he's against the TVA. Yeah. So we see the scene where he's killing a bunch of TVA. Yeah. So it almost makes me wonder if Wolverine getting thrown into the mix is like one of those where Deadpool's like, no, nah, that's my guy. Like I'm gonna stick with him, and they're like, all right, we're just gonna send you both to the void, kind of yeah. deal, and be done with this and move on. And um, I'm I'm just kind of curious to see how that plot kind of moves from that point where we see the TVA take Deadpool, because it almost seems like Deadpool's almost like maybe like an anchor for the universe he comes from, and then not sure if, you know, Wolverine's gone, or maybe him being gone is what's going to destroy his universe or what, but um, yeah, I mean, it seems like his universe is maybe threatened by the TVA, I'm thinking, and maybe that's why he's begging Wolverine, like, you gotta help me get out of here so, like, we can try and save my universe, maybe? I don't know. I don't know, it um, almost seems like, instead of him being the because if he was the anchor, why would the TVA come after him beside, and, ha- and have him recruit Wolverine besides him doing the time travel, right? If it was just the time travel, they would just per- uh, prune him right away. I, I think it's, I think it's because he's have a, he either lost his Wolverine, or doesn't have a Wolverine. And I think the reason why he's fighting the TVA is because they think the Wolverine that he brought back did something so bad in his universe that he's not worthy to be the Wolverine to be the anchor point in his universe to save it, is is my guess. Yeah, and I'll I'll make a counterpoint. Um, I think that part of the reason why you see them wanting to work with Wade is because they want to send him to the Void to try and kill Cassandra Nova. Because the hardest person to fight, like, as a telepath, is the guy that's mentally insane that Mm -hmm. you can't telegraph what he's going to do, and that's Deadpool. 
He's unpredictable, yeah. Y- yeah, so you have no clue. So it's like, even with, we've seen that shot in the trailer where, like, Wolverine goes, like, in, and she's, like, talking to him, and she just basically, like, controls his body and everything like that. You know, that's a little bit hard to do with somebody like Deadpool, because you don't, you can't really get a good read on him. Like, you can read his mind, but whatever he thinks a second from now may not be yeah. what it was a second ago. So I feel like maybe that's one of those things where maybe they get to Cassandra Nova, and they find out that maybe the real enemy is the TVA and then maybe that's like when she opens up the portal or whatever it's like them leaving to go back and resolve something I'm not sure but you know maybe that moment is one of those where it's like hey we're surrounded by the enemy kind of type of deal and then they meet her and then they're like okay maybe we don't we don't hate her as much as we thought we we would and Deadpool's like I don't want to kill her maybe I'm going to go back and you know mess up the TVA some more maybe that's why the TVA goes after him and starts killing them or something but yep it looks like that scene too. It looks like it's from Age of Ultron. The way they're fighting the snow and the woods kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that first beginning scene of Ultron when the rat stuckers uh, hide out. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's during that time, during that fight scene. Also, too, I wonder where in the TVA are we at? Are we post Loki season two? Are we in between Loki season one and two? Or are we before mm-hmm. Loki season one? Yeah. With, with the time frame of this movie for them. I, I wonder where we're at in the time frame of things. It also looks like, too, from the latest trailer, we are going to have Hunter B15. Mm-hmm. um in in this in this movie so it, it's gonna be interesting to see and i also want to know with them kind of doing like their you know their journey across the multiverse what scenes from previous moral films are we going to see right because you know they pretty much have carte blanche to the fox verse um you know all of uh who else they acquired they acquired fox and they acquired um they acquired two two different um companies to get more characters oh um, um. Not it was sure. Fox and somebody else that they, but they've acquired a couple studio, you know, studios to be able to get access to the characters plus the slate of characters that are in the MCU. Um, it also be interesting to see too where this movie ends up in the end, and is are they going to save Deadpool's universe? Is Deadpool going to pull his people into the main MCU timeline? Uh-huh. You know, because we don't think it's the last we're going to see of Deadpool. You know, he's going to be back for Secret Wars, and, and probably when we get into the whole X Men uh, saga of things as as well. Um, and will, will they introduce a new Wolverine in this one? Or should we talk about the big trailer review of the last big trailer that Daphne Keene is back, uh, and it looks like they do visit Logan's universe, and she's older. And yeah. so could this be the passing of the torch to her to be the MC Wolverine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that caught me off guard was I had no intention of rewatching Logan, but then we saw that new trailer and I was like, Oh, I feel like I need to go watch Logan again now. You know, just, I don't really think it's going to be like anything crucial that is going to like, you know, you need to rewatch the whole movie, but I just kind of want to, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we saw that universe. It seemed like it was kind of coming to an end and, you know, for her, that's probably going to be one of those moments where she's going to be able to make the argument that, you know, Wolverine was amazing in her universe and he was willing to, like fight to give her a chance to survive kind of type of deal and that's probably going to be a heavy motivator i think yep green and in this movie to kind of you know get back in the saddle of things and help deadpool but i'm just hoping that they don't see her in the void but i feel like they're going to see her in the void you know um i don't it almost feel like they see her in logan's universe from the trailer it looks like they're like in like kind of the same woods where possibly his grave is in that movie Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they that you know they're in that universe and not the void at that time when they find mm-hmm. her. Maybe she joins them. Mm-hmm. Maybe she fights with them, and at the end, you know, Just, we kind of get we, we kind of get the goodbye to Logan, but passing the torch to to her. Because like Laura. her and all the other little mutants, they like ran and they got away, but they never really said what happened to them. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, you know, maybe they'll shine a little bit of light on that, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was incredibly shocked when, when I saw her in that trailer, like, you know, she kind of pulled, uh, Andrew Garfield there and she's like made that remark about how she learned from the best Andrew Garfield about lying about being in the movie yep. and everything. And so, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. And, you know, they've said before that they're basically not going to touch that movie, and it seems like they're not really going to touch that in this movie. They're just basically going to kind of like reference it and use it as a motivator for Wolverine to be, yeah. you know, the best at what he does, basically. Like, I almost wonder if he visits that universe looking for him and finds out that he's not there and he mm-hmm. runs into her type of thing. And then, or 
or maybe he, I don't. Yeah, interesting because if, if he goes there before he finds this Wolverine he's with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have those events gonna happen, or does it all, or they go there together and him using as a motivator? I don't know. I'll be interesting to see, but yeah. at some point they're gonna touch that and find out he's not there. So yeah, I'll be interesting to see. Maybe they are in the void. Maybe you're right. I, Maybe it is I, the void. I feel like this movie is gonna have a lot of scenery changes like quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's gonna be a lot, like because like if you think about it, I, I don't remember how long they said this movie is gonna be, but I know it's not gonna be three hours, right? Like so. no, it's uh, two hours, and like I'll find out where it was. I think we talked about last week on the news, but I gotta double check. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's like doing his little party thing in the beginning. Then he's taken by the TVA. Then he goes through the TVA stuff. Then he goes looking for a Wolverine and goes and meets a bunch of those. Then he eventually ends up in the void. I don't really think we know what really goes on beyond that. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of like scenery and time and place changes like rapid in this movie. You know, two so, hours and seven minutes is okay. what is being reported for the movie. I think that, that's that's quick. That, that's that's beginning to end probably with credits too and post credits scene that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's not like it's gonna be quick and, and buckle up. I also uh since you mentioned Logan and the events of Logan, you know, he was very had a lot of guilt for the other X Men, like something happened where either him or Professor X killed the other X Men. Mm-hmm. They they I don't think they ever came out and say in Logan. They they kind of just uh, alluded to it, but never really confirmed what what that event was. They kind of teased it. So I wonder when they go to the universe where they said that Wolverine that he's with let his whole universe down, and they mm-hmm. show all the graves there. If they kind of if if a parallel type event happened in that universe, and we get some more kind of clarity of what they were kind of alluding to in Logan about one of them laying down the the, the team that that event that happened. This this Wolverine kind of has like some old man Logan kind of vibes to it a little bit, you know. And um, I think there was a line that was in that movie about like they're driving down the road and Professor X is in the back, and you hear like over the the speakers in the car, like the radio is playing something, and then it goes, and the guy's like talking about, you know, like this is very similar because it's like right after he has one of those seizures, those psionic mm-hmm. seizures. It, this is very similar to, I think what happened at like X mansion to a bunch of students or so, like he says something like that. So it makes you believe that maybe something similar kind of happened to the X men or something, you know, professor X did it. Um, but I don't think they ever really say, I, I don't think specifically in Logan, I think they just kind of allude. To yeah. It, and you're right there, you know? So, be interesting to see i don't think we're gonna get stewart back in this you no. know um i think people maybe probably, mcavoy yeah maybe mcavoy yeah but um it, it seems like they've got so many characters in this movie and um you know i'm sure that we haven't seen all of them yet but i mean even just the different wolverine variants you know there's been different rumors about different actors playing those so um i even think I, carl urban was uh, rumored as a, one of them too as well Mm-hmm. So and we have like what Radcliffe, Urban, and Cavill all being rumored to be a variance. But like I said, I don't think it's going to happen. But go, go ahead. Yeah, no. I, um, so I mean, regardless, like even if it's just Hugh Jackman playing all the variants and everything, mm-hmm. it's going to be. I I almost feel like they're going to do that, almost like in a highlight reel kind of thing of like Wolf or excuse me, Deadpool jump into universes and like you know the one where he tries to kick his claws out and like they only come out like that far and it's like you know he's like oh you know like but that's common in wolverines over 40 i almost feel like that's like a universe where it's like that wolverine's just different his claws are different and he's like all right this isn't the one i want next universe you know kind of type of deal and uh that's gonna be one of those types of things and i feel like he's gonna see like patch and and be like okay i i don't want you you're not the right wolverine and then eventually he's gonna find like one that's the closest and he's gonna be like okay that's you're the right one and that's gonna be the one that we end up with the broken one you know and uh i like his line about like when he's like talking to him in that diner and he's like you know you were the x-man you were you know da 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 da. you were like and he's talking about him like he's referencing from his universe not from you know that universe so um really curious to see what that story and that background is going to be for wolverine and how they kind of explain why he's just like fallen into a pit of abyss basically you know i also wonder too how much more of deadpool variants we're going to see because you know what each university goes to he hops through we're going <laughs> to run into a, a deadpool variant as well mm-hmm. it's funny you say uh old man logan too also it, it does seem like we're going to get some wastelanders vibes mm-hmm. in this movie it looks like with you know cassandra nova and the void that kind of has a wastelanders looking feel the whole thing of um of ant-man's helmet you know mm-hmm. i i believe in wastelanders you get the whole body of his corpse laying there 
mm -hmm. as well. So yep. it, it does feel like we're getting some pulls from from those pages as well. That'll be interesting to see. Um, the other thing here too, also, um, is I wonder how they're gonna d explain Elias. You know, because depending where this movie is, we saw that Elias was kind of you know. I think at the end of Loki season one, he pretty much was defeated, wasn't he? Well, I think, I think he was just kind of like, he was like the guard dog for he who remains. And then once he was distracted and they got past him, it was just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, you know, he's not really a problem anymore. And I don't really think they really explained much. I don't even remember them really referencing him in season two, did they? No. So I wonder, I wonder if that was an opportunity for her to get power of Elias or... Mm -hmm how they're going to explain that as well, because, you know, you can't just throw a life in there and not kind of explain that bridge between Loki and, and now with this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be really interesting. Um, you know, I, I think that there might be a chance that maybe she, maybe Cassandra Nova has got, it looks like she's got some type of machine or something in that final trailer that she's using. And I don't know if it's something to connect to the multiverse or if it's to use for a life, but Maybe she's got like something kind of like Cerebro kind of going on where she can control the thing or something, you know, and she's got it inside of Ant-Man's head or something, you know. It almost makes sense that this movie would be after the events of Loki season two, mm -hmm. because we know that He Remains is gone after Loki season one. We mm -hmm. know that season two, they're, they're pretty much defeating a majority of the Kangs across the multiverse. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like this movie has to be after Loki season two. Mm -hmm. And with ever, whatever was left in the void by the the remnants of of He Who Remains, plus all the other kings being defeated and not being able to get back to that same point, you know, like that loop, mm -hmm. that she kind of was able to take some of the stuff and, and do things with it mm -hmm. um, and, and gain power in, in the void. Unless we're I, somewhere else and it's not really the void and they're kind of tricking us right now with all the trailers. I would agree with that. I feel like this has to be after season two. And, you know, I, I think that the way season two of Loki kind of ended, it doesn't necessarily have to reference Loki per se, but like it can definitely still reference Elioth and all the stuff happening in the void. You know, I'm not saying that they'll, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that they're going to be aware of the citadel at the end of time kind of type of deal you know just sitting over there being protected by Elioth. but at the same time they might just be like you know feel like they're on the run from Elioth, and then one day like cassandra nova just kind of dumps out there and figures out how to stop it and she can just either control it herself or with tech or whatever and that's what you know helps them out and um that's how like all those those different mutants end up there because it feels like to me just based on what we've seen i mean i know we've seen like juggernaut who technically isn't a mutant that we believe is in this movie now but it seems like this is basically just like a collection of mutants that are around cassandra nova and not really anybody else so, yeah um you know maybe this is just like kind of like a mutant um camp if you will where they're saving all the mutants and everything like that and it's like their little encampment and that's how we get like you know juggernaut so it's like more like villains and stuff like that but i don't know i'm, I'm really curious to see what happens to them at the end of this movie too and you know is this something where because it almost seems like cassandra nova was the main villain but i don't believe cassandra nova is the actual main villain because in that scene where they jump through the portal and they leave, it seems like they're going somewhere else after having a conversation with her. Which makes me believe that she's, like, almost communicated something isn't true. That, like, maybe the TVA sent Deadpool there to kill her. And then Deadpool realizes in his own way that she's not the real threat there. That there's somebody else. So, I'm but curious. that's somebody else being. I hope they don't try to... You know, with all the Kang stuff, and when we get to the uh, the news later on in the next episode, we do the boys season, uh, season finale. There's some talk about that, but I hope they're not trying to shoehorn another villain in to replace Kang, like Doom or the Beyonder. Yeah. Um, you know, I hope maybe it's someone within the TVA I itself. You know, and maybe this That's could lead to th this could lead to where this movie could be between season one and two of Loki, or during season two of Loki, um, mm -hmm. with everything going on between the two different parties uh in mm -hmm. kang inside of the tva so and i mean we've seen rogue factions in the tva before like the tva kind of split in two at one point and there was like one one group that wanted to do one thing and another group that kind of wanted to do another 
And so I kind of feel like we might be having some of that where it's like, hey, this is going to be like another like Hydra within S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of situation. Like they don't really understand that there's people that have nefarious uh, beliefs like, hey, Loki stopped, you know, the TVA from falling apart, yep. but he's still doing that and we don't need to reference him, but there's still bad people within the TVA that have their own goals and their own things that they're trying to accomplish. It's almost so, like that, that that same fight they had at the end of Loki season two where they're still trying to dispersing of Kangs and mm -hmm. there's still great people within the TVA that are still trying to fight for him and fight for what they had before. Yep. Um... Speaking of Sandra Nova, I wonder how much backstory of her we're going to get. Like, where she come from? What universe was she in? Mm -hmm. Did the universe she come from? Was she the Professor X type person? And there wasn't one in that in that one. You know, Instead what of events? Like, yeah, Professor X. Yeah, I like that idea. I think that would be awesome if they did that. And that could be the very reason why she was pruned was because you know, like it was a universe where there was no Professor X. So get rid of her, kind of type yep. of thing. You know, so I like that idea. I'm also trying to think where else, too, is that after this film, where are they going to pop? At least Deadpool, where is Deadpool going to pop up again, right? You mm -hmm. know, it looks like in the one trailer, he does make reference to Spider-Man. He's doing the web shooter thing in the car. Um, you know, we, we've long wanted to see him in movies with um, with other characters. And Kevin mm -hmm. Feige also made a comment um, uh, via comic.com. Kevin Feige says he's already thought about fitting Deadpool into PG-13 movie with other MCU characters. What's fun about the Marvel team up is it's almost always characters that don't belong. That kind of whole idea is to take people that shouldn't be together and put them together. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder is, can we see him possibly in a Spider-Man film? We know that Spider-Man four is coming at some time. Um, I don't think he'll be in blade. I don't think it'll be in fantastic four. I think mm -hmm. it might be too long before we see him in one of the Avengers films. He's going to pop up somewhere else in between. I don't think he'll be in brave new world. That one's done. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be in Thunderbolts. And right now, the only movie I can think of on the slate pretty much seems like it's going to be Spider-Man 4 he could pop up in. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget that line with Celine Dion where she told him to beat it, Spider-Man. So it's like, it feels like, you know, like after Deadpool 2, it feels like, you know, it would just be perfect to put in, in that. And the fact that we're here with this third Deadpool movie, you know, after all these jokes about Wolverine for all the previous two movies and everything and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's awesome that I feel like we've finally gotten to this point where it feels like... This is, like, such an amazing trilogy, even though we haven't seen the third movie, I feel like, plot-wise. And it was, like, almost like they never planned for this to happen with the third movie going from the second movie, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think it fits really well with what's going on in the MCU right now, so. Yeah, I just hope that we don't have to wait until, like I said, an Avengers film to see him again. Uh -huh. They should it, definitely do that thing where he, like, replaces Stan Lee and just yeah. pops up in random stuff, you know? Like, spider Man swinging through the city and he's buying a hot dog at, like, a hot dog stand or something like that, you know? Be so funny and so perfect. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could just have Deadpool just pop up little places and stuff like that and then come in for big team-up events and stuff and, yeah, why not, you know? D do more with him. Um, make him part of the main universe at this point it, i mean after secret wars if they reboot everything in like a soft reboot kind of way boom he's in you know the main timeline there you go so and it seems like too we, we've been trending on the way of mutants as as well in the mcu right it, it first started off with you know technically it started off with multiverse of madness uh when he went to 838 and we saw professor x there mm -hmm. uh then continue with wakanda forever with with namor um, and then look at what's going on with, um, the Marvels, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Miss Marvel show, and then the Marvels as well, all leading towards mutants. And, uh, Kevin Feige had some comments to say about that too, as well. So via the playlist, um, Kevin Feige says, now that we have characters from X-Men world, the mutants, we haven't had, we haven't had access to before. So this is the beginning of that in every movie post Deadpool and Wolverine will be the mutant error coming into the MCU. So it almost sounds like that. He's definitely saying that the next saga is probably going to be the mutant saga. Like everyone, you know, is speculating for a while now. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that comes, will we have an Avengers versus X-Men movie, you know, type of I thing. So. Could, could they potentially do a civil war? Mm -hmm. uh movie like a captain marvel civil war now between you know avengers and mutants and you know having kamala khan kind of stuck in the middle mm -hmm. of a thing so we should see where things go after this where they lead to 
um, and how much more mutants we start seeing in the MCU after this. And they could totally do that. I mean, they've already got like the the slate and I think like everything coming up where it kind of sets that up, right? Like if I remember correctly, the character in Civil War Two that they're fighting over is Ulysses and he's that kid that's got like the premonitions yep. and it's like Tony and Carol Danvers button heads over that. So they could just replace Tony with Rhodey and have him, you know, kind of butt heads with her about that. And then they're both ex-military people so they could kind of try and find commonality over that but then ultimately disagree and then it becomes like a civil war type of thing and i think that would be awesome but then just have kamala be that character that's you know the ulysses type character but one that's in between those two and i think that would be great you know if they kind of did something like that and they went forward so and you could have some x-men in the mix too as well because since uh with kamala being a, a mutant and maybe some of those or mutants uh, in general, and maybe those those people team up with Rhodey, mm -hmm. um, and kind of against Carol, and that's when we get the whole fight between Rogue and Carol, maybe in the MCU, mm -hmm. and maybe Rogue does enough to get Carol's powers, but doesn't kill her like in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a pretty cool one to see. Um, yeah, so they they have a, a lot of ways they can go at this going forward. They could just um, like put put uh, Captain Marvel in a uh, like a coma for a while or something yep. like that if they really wanted to, and then just bring her out like down the road. But I guess all that would take place like after the Secret Wars stuff, and you know that would be something like in a soft reboot, which would be really interesting to see. I mean, we've we still got to see who they're going to cast as Rogue and all these characters and stuff. Um, what are the chances that you think that we will see more of like the Fox X Men and stuff and leading up to Secret War is like kind of tied into that versus before the soft reboot and then they just kind of move into all new castings with like a soft reboot? I feel like that's kind of where we're going at this point. I don't think you can do that though. I, I don't mm -hmm. think you, you can bring some of those characters back. They, they mm -hmm. you know, it, it seems like Wolverine is the perfect bridge person for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, th them bringing back, you know, um, Anna Paquin or Halle Berry mm -hmm. um, or James Marston or Frank Jensen, you know, post this film, I, I don't think that is, you know, really a direction they should go. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I said earlier, you know, they could do a soft reboot and keep some of the actors so they could reintroduce new actors for those roles now. Like, like I don't mind seeing some of those Fox Force characters pop up in, in this movie as cameos or flashbacks, that kind of stuff. But... I definitely don't think I want to see those some of those same actors going forward as Marvel characters, even in this point in the MCU. It's like, mm -hmm. I think if for a Secret Wars thing, the only person you can probably bring in right now it will be Hugh Jackman for that. that, mm -hmm. And then maybe Tobey Maguire and Angie Garfield, but then everything yeah. else, maybe, you know, just scrap. You know, like, even Blade, mm -hmm. I wouldn't bring back Blade for a Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. and then maybe a Blade cameo on this movie would be great. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they visit Blade's universe and crack a joke. Mm -hmm. But Wolsey Snipes or something like that, and that'd be kind of cool, but you know, and I'm not dissing, you know, because Blade was like the one of the first trilogies out there that did a lot of things up in, in the Marvel movies and that kind of stuff. So I'm not mm -hmm. dissing that. I'm just saying, do we really need all that, uh, you know, post this film? You know, handpick a couple of characters that you know are your heavy hitters. Garfield, Maguire, Hugh Jackman, those three, plus, plus Ryan Reynolds. You kind of got your four core people there going into a Secret Wars or that type of thing. And you don't need to bring anyone else past past this film. And and see, I feel like with that Marvels credit, the the Marvels where they had that uh, post credit scene with Beast, I feel like they're gonna do something with the X Men, right? Yeah. You know? So it's like I'm just curious to see how deep they go into that. I guess before Secret Wars. And so. that's a good point too, because bringing a, a comic accurate Beast back in the film with Kelsey mm -hmm. Grammer voicing him again, I think that mm -hmm. fits as well some of the characters. Along with Patrick mm -hmm. Stewart, or maybe even um, Ian McKellen, who's kind of out of act, out of um, he's kind of out of action right now because he had a fell or something recently. Um, oh. But aside from some of those those heavy hitters, I don't think you can really much bring anyone else back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely forgot about Patrick Stewart, Stewart in uh, Multiverse of Madness. So yeah. um, you know, it's like we have kind of had them sprinkling like X Men kind of in throughout. You know some of the pe previous movies so i'm just curious to see if we just if they go full force with it or if it's just kind of like we just get a few random x-men and secret wars leading up because i hope we see hugh jackman continue to play wolverine at least into like a secret wars movie yeah. or something you know yeah. and then maybe they're done with him after that but um because i mean i know he is getting kind of older 
Um, and he's been playing that character now for what, like 20 some years. So, he's the longest yeah. running character right now with the most appearances, I believe. Again, I think so. So, yeah. um, but like, like I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if they use this film to hand the torch to Daphne Keene going forward mm -hmm. to play Laura as the Wolverine in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Which will probably piss off people, but who cares? It's, it's, <laughs> it's you know, it's not like it's unprecedented it happened in the comics. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, um, you know, kind of winding things down. Um, any other expectations for it for Deadpool or before we wrap things up? No, I'm just excited for the movie. Um, honestly, I'm probably the most excited for this movie as I've been for a Marvel movie in a long time. Um, I will say that after watching the first Deadpool and getting ready to watch the second one, it's been really refreshing to go back and just kind of watch the first one and laugh as much as I did. Just over, like, the humor in it is just, like... It's like touch and go that you make a, a joke, you move on. It's funny. It's not like anything crazy. Um, yeah, Deadpool is an insane character, and uh, it's it's funny getting to watch that stuff and see like Green Lantern being referenced, and you know the first like um, where they they've got like the roll of everything's frozen and the camera is like panning around, and you see like Rob Liefeld being re uh, referenced and stuff like that. And we'll see more of that in this movie. So you know they're gonna. I know we've got that sign that says like Rob Liefeld's feet or whatever because he struggles to draw feet and stuff. So there's going to be a lot of those types of things, I think in this movie that they continue to do. And, um, I just think that it's going to be such a solid fit to this franchise that it's gonna, it's gonna just fit so well. And I don't know, it, it's like the greatest mistake that's ever happened was like having that second movie in where it did. Cause it fit right into yep. where it was going with the MCU. So it was like, I don't think that they ever intended that to happen. And if they did, who knows, maybe they had a crystal ball of then, you yep. know, and it just worked out perfectly. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm incredibly thankful and glad that we got this third movie. I'm incredibly shocked that Wolverine was in it and Hugh Jackman came back and um yeah i just i can't wait for it i'm i'm stoked and this will be what like our only marvel movie this year is that correct yes because i think anything else we have agatha in the fall i don't think we have any other movies coming out this year mm -hmm. I did, I did other than if, if i think sony might have craven coming out this oh, yeah, year, but, right? yeah but, but no mcu yeah. movies uh yeah marvel movies let me look real quick uh 2024 i think this is the last film of the year under the mcu we do have venom coming out um, mm -hmm. and we have Craven coming out, but those are all Sony films. Not, nothing MCU wise, um, mm -hmm. it is coming out. Uh, we do have Agatha in the fall. We, we possibly might have, um, the, the, um, Wakanda show and then possibly mm -hmm. Finally Neighborhood Spider-Man coming out later this year as well. But movie wise, this is the only movie this year for Marvel. So weird, weird movie year for Marvel this year. Yeah. Or for so. MCU, I should say, not Marvel. Yeah. MCU. Um. But I, I kind of echo your thoughts. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I think the biggest thing for me is that it's it's great to see, after all the jokes and the banter that we get, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds on screen together as Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, with some mm -hmm. comic accurate stuff. You know that costume has been teased so long for Wolverine wearing that, and he's finally going to wear it. Um. Mm -hmm. There was some. I think I saw today. The reason why they went in black in the X Men films is because of the Matrix films. And hmm. not with the regular costumes type thing. So it's even funny too because they made that joke in X97 about, you know, their costumes as well. Um, mm -hmm. So they kind of knew about that. But yeah, that's the biggest excitement. Um, I'm excited to see what all variants and characters that we see in this film. Um, mm -hmm. I hope they stay with the jokes and the tone of Deadpool 2. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought they went a little bit too much on the jokes where it, it kind of got childish in Deadpool 1, but it seemed mm -hmm. like they kind of cleaned that up and it was a better joking tone in, in Deadpool 2. Um, mm -hmm. So I hope they kind of stay with that tone. Uh, my biggest thing here is I'm interested to see where this goes next, what this sets up, what the post credit scenes do. Like I said, I you know hopefully you know if, if there's no more plans for Hugh Jackman to return for Secret Wars or, or Secret Wars' his last hurrah, and since we have Daphne Keene, Maybe they kind of introduce her as the next Wolverine, or we would get a, a hint that another universe Wolverine that's not played by Hugh Jackman that, you know, could be the Wolverine going forward. Um, I'll be interested to see where Deadpool is going to pop up next. Because look at the film slate, 
you know, I don't see a lot of opportunities outside of Spider-Man to pop mm -hmm. up because I guess he could pop up in Blade as a joke, you know, maybe the Stan, Stan Lee cameo because Blade hasn't been filming yet. But, you know, Thunderbolts is filming. Um, Brave New World is Brave New World is done. So it's not going to be there. Um, so, yeah, we have all those things. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm excited for it. Um, I was excited to see a, a Marvel film. I, I, I like, you know, I really haven't had one. I really haven't enjoyed. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I kind of like them all the, for different reasons. Um, but, yeah, th that's all I have. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm seeing it Thursday afternoon, like right after I get done working. Uh, so mm -hmm. you have to go check that out that first night. So no spoilers type of thing for me, hopefully mm -hmm. between now and then. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I got. Any thoughts, Alex? I, I was, I'll just throw this out there. I was watching the first Deadpool movie and you remember the guy he kept on referring to as agent Smith that worked for the program that like came, obviously I believe Deadpool kills that guy in that yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one got recruited him. Yeah. But, yeah, but I was like, wouldn't it have been so cool if that guy, like, had turned out to be, like, a TVA agent that <laughs> had, like, kind of put Deadpool on that path, and oh. then, like, you know, that's the reason why Deadpool is the way that he is, because it was like, oh, he's gonna die, but he's really gonna end up being part of the Sacred Timeline, so we have to get him to undergo this procedure so he can become Deadpool and eventually be a part. I, oh, I thought that would be that's so a cool, but obviously, you know, that's that a pretty cool dead, shout out. But, yeah, it, it really, yeah, if there are any moments like that 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 set him up for this from deadpool one mm -hmm. or two and and that one him becoming deadpool would would be uh a, a great one for the reason for him to become you know you have that surgery and live on and so forth so i, I like that thought that's really a good thought mm -hmm. all right well we'll be back on august uh 4th with andy for the review episode so there will be nothing next week unless we decide to talk about um comic-con because we're kind of spoiled right so thursday we get deadpool and wolverine release the the premiere is like monday or tuesday this upcoming week um yep. and then going into the weekend we get san diego comic-con which they're gonna have not one but two different panels at comic-con one just for deadpool and wolverine and then the regular marvel studios one so we might be back on sunday um alex and i will talk over the week to see um mm -hmm. we'll see what happens i guess with news and what comes out um, mm -hmm. but other than that, we will be back, uh, the 4th, August 4th with Andy to talk about the review. Um, here shortly, we're going to be back on talking about the boys season four finale and also mm -hmm. the news and rumors as well. Uh, so don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on your platforms. Uh, give us feedback on our podcast. Uh, make sure you follow the Facebook page. If we get that, those followers up, we can stream to the page again. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, Twitch. Twitter X, I'm sorry, Twitter slash X, Trovo, Kick, all the usual places, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok as well. So with that being said, uh, we will see you shortly for the boys um, season four finale uh, discussion. Talk to you later. See ya.